Four days ago, I think I met my long lost sister. Growing up, I was told by my adoptive parents that I was adopted at 10 months old. They're always open about it. They framed up a picture of me and my parents and placed it in my room so I would always remember them. They even track down their grave and take me there once every two years. We'll have a little picnic and they will ask me to share my achievements with my biological parents. They didn't change my last name to theirs and allowed me to decide whether I want to change it, which I did in my teens. I am now 27, a nurse, and I live on my own with my cat, just a few hours away from my adoptive parents. I have a neighbor, let's call her Anna. She's a marine biologist, married, and has three kids. We often chat when we bump into each other in the hallway or her kids will come over to my place to play with my cat. Four days ago, I got a knock on my door and it was Anna. Turns out her nanny went MIA on her at the last minute and it was already late for a close friend's wedding and was wondering if I can watch the kids for a couple of hours while they're gone. She asked me if I can watch them at her apartment instead since her youngest is sleeping. I grabbed my stuff and went over next door. We played dolls, played pretend and ordered food and watched a movie after that. So I told the kids to keep their toys before the food arrived and while we were at it, I saw something that made my heart drop. I saw a picture of my parents. They looked so much younger and it was a different picture from what I had. I asked Anna's kids if they knew who these people were. They told me that they had no idea who it was. My curiosity grew more and more. I texted my adoptive parents if they knew if I had any siblings. They told me that they were not too certain but in the adoption profile it stated that I'm alone and without any siblings. A few hours later Anna got home. I was inquisitive to know and I couldn't wait any longer. I asked Anna who this young couple was. Anna told me it was her parents and they died when she was six. She was then raised by her aunt. I was shocked. I feel like throwing up. This can't be real. I have a sister. I went home and did some social engineering. I went on Facebook and Instagram to see what I could find. I found the profile of an old lady I believe is the one that raised Anna. I see that she refers to Anna as her daughter and I was looking at pictures and I found a rather similar picture to what my adoptive parents gave me just without me in it. I called my adoptive parents crying telling them what I found. They drove for hours to come to me when I showed them and the three of us cried together. They told me that I should let her know. I don't know if I should because it seems like she doesn't know that I exist. I gathered myself and yes, I spoke to Anna. I invited her to my apartment away from her kids so the both of us can sit down and talk about it. I showed her the picture that I have. She's as confused as I am. I told her that we might be sisters. I could see the tears building up at the edge of her eyes. She told me she wants to be excused. She left my apartment and I thought that was it. For a while, there's so much of what ifs. What if she's my cousin? What if the baby in the photo is not me? What if there was a mix up at the adoption home? A few minutes later, she knocked on my apartment door. She brought her laptop, the photo of her parents, and her phone. We compared our pictures, and yes, they're the same person. I showed my birth certificate and how I changed my last name during my teens, as well as my adoption papers. I told her that I have a birthmark on the left side of my butt cheek, and yes, she remembered. We looked at each other and we started sobbing. She came to hug me and told me that at times she couldn't believe that I'm gone because she loves me so much. She told me how she thought I was dead and that broke her. She video called her aunt, the one that raised her. Let's call her Lucy. When Anna introduced me to Aunt Lucy, she looked horrified. She even asked if Anna got mixed up because she was pretty sure I was dead. We showed her my birth certificate and all the adoption documents. And Once she saw there was evidence, she started crying and kept on apologizing. Aunt Lucy was hesitating at first, but we told her how we deserved to know the truth. Here goes the side of the story I never knew. Firstly, my parents died in two separate accidents. My mom and I met with an accident first. I was fine, but my mom suffered multiple injuries, and when my father got to know, he rushed to the hospital to meet my mom, but he lost control of the car and crashed onto the road divider. Both died at the same hospital, just minutes apart. What the fudge? She was then told that I died too. My sister got sick shortly after my parents' death and couldn't attend my funeral. My dad was a marine biologist, just like Anna, and my mom was a general surgeon. We have an uncle, let's call him John. So apparently, Aunt Lucy and Uncle John needed money. Aunt Lucy had lots of kids, hence she couldn't afford to raise both of us, while Uncle John and his wife were into traveling and could use some money for their adventures. I have no idea, but somehow they managed to get whatever our parents have left us and split it into two. I was given to Uncle John, but he must have placed me at an adoption home and then fled the country. All the while, Aunt Lucy knew about me and how I was placed at an adoption home, but she chooses to keep quiet. A few years later, I was sent to the adoption home. Uncle John and his wife came back to the nursing to get me, but they learned that I was already adopted. It's sad to learn his motives were to receive government reimbursement while I was under their foster care. I felt extremely lucky to be adopted by a family who loved, cared for, and raised me like their own. My adoptive parents were a mature couple when they adopted me. 
They tried to conceive for so many years, but it failed, and so it resulted in me being adopted, and they told me it was the best decision they'd ever made. Anna is not speaking to Aunt Lucy now, and she told me how she felt betrayed and deceived all these years while denying a sibling love just for her own personal gain. She's even looking into taking legal action against both of them. Me and Anna embraced for a long time. There's a lot to catch up and I'm excited that I'm an aunt to three beautiful kids. The feeling is foreign, but the feeling of being loved by a sibling is beyond words. Am I the asshole for fat shaming my friend? Story time. So me and this girl Amy aren't really friends. The only reason I speak to her is because we're in the same friendship group. But if it weren't for this situation, I really don't think we'd get on. Basically, I've never liked her. She's the kind of person that believes she has the right to speak her mind, even if it upsets people. And that includes giving unsolicited advice, you know, the, those type of people. We barely interacted and I had never had problems with this girl until last week. Basically, I had been avoiding all of my friends for months. I'd lost a really close family member and I was really not doing well. I basically spiralled into a really deep depression, but I put myself in therapy and I am doing so much better now. Through this, I've obviously sort of let myself go a little bit and I gained quite a bit of weight. And this change in my physicality is also another reason why I avoid in my friends. So last week we are having dinner at my friend's house and Amy keeps on making remarks about how I look. She was saying how different I look now and how big I'd become. Which I found a little bit ironic, not gonna lie. From conversations that we've had as a group, Amy has always struggled with her body image. She has always mentioned that she knows that she's a bigger girl. And she's mentioned that this is something that she would like to change. She kept talking about me, saying how I'm such a catfish from online because I look so much bigger in person. She was telling me about all of these gyms I should sign up to, saying I should brush my hair more. And at first, I ignored her and a lot of my friends were telling her to stop. Apparently, Amy decided that my appearance was the most interesting thing we could have spoken about that night. She sat this whole afternoon just sipping her wine and even at one point said this. She was like, remember when Adele was fat? Yeah, you look like a fat Adele. And at this point, it had been going on for hours and I was starting to get really, really sad. So I was like, screw this, I'm gonna stick up for myself. I stood up from my seat very confidently and very slowly. And that was when I said, I've been taking medication, what's your excuse? Her face immediately went red and she got up and went into the other room. She hasn't said a single thing about my appearance or anyone else's since. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole here? Now it's the most heartbreaking thing that has happened to you in jail? I was arrested after making the dumb mistake of driving without a driver's license and telling the officer that I didn't have my license on me and gave him my sister's name and birth date. I was charged with misdemeanor probation violation with the original charge being criminal impersonation and was in jail waiting to go to court. I had never been in any legal trouble before I made the abominably stupid idea to try to trick the officer out of giving me a ticket for driving without a license. About four weeks into my incarceration I began getting severe headaches. It got so bad that I put in a request to go to medical and see the jail's physician assistant. After seeing her for the first time and describing the pain that I felt in my nose that spread to the top of my head, I was told that I was suffering from a sinus infection. I accepted that as a plausible explanation, and took the antibiotics that were prescribed to me. A week went by and the pain was getting worse, not better. I again requested to go to the medical, and was again seen by the PA. I told her the pain was getting severe, that it had spread to the side of my face and the back of my neck, and asked to be taken to the hospital. The PA told me that she was not sending me to the hospital, that hospital visits were only reserved for emergencies, and she had concluded I had an impacted tooth. A day went by and I was in complete agony. I was unable to move my head even the slightest bit without feeling as if my entire head would explode. The pain was so bad that I couldn't eat, sleep, and basically laid on my bunk sobbing. I begged every officer on shift to help me. Different sergeants were called in to talk to me and I begged them to send me to the hospital, but was always refused. About nine days after my headaches began I developed double vision. I told the nurse that was handing out meds that I had constant double vision. I remember telling her, there's two of you. I was instructed to put in a slip to request to go to the doctor. A few hours after the double vision began I was talking to another inmate when she went, oh my god, your eyes. They've shifted. I went into my cell and looked into the mirror, and was horrified to see that I had gone cross-eyed. I had been calling my mom every day telling her that I knew something was very wrong with me. After seeing that I had gone cross-eyed I called my mom, hysterically told her I was cross-eyed, and asked her to call the jail and see if she could persuade them to take me to the hospital. Everyone my mom called and spoke to on the phone or talked to in person at the jail would assure her that I was getting adequate medical care. I requested to speak with a sergeant, and after about an hour one showed up to talk to me. I showed him my eyes, told him my vision was doubled, told him I was in the worst pain of my life, and pleaded with him to send me to the hospital. I told him that I knew something was seriously wrong, that I knew if I wasn't treated soon I would die. To which he said, oh, I didn't know that you're a doctor, he laughed. Go back to your cell, you can go to the medical in the morning. 
The next morning, after about my tenth sleepless, agonizing night, I discovered I could no longer walk properly. Instead of my normal stride I was now walking with small shuffled steps. I felt very unbalanced, like everything was spinning. I was on a second story tier, and it was nearly impossible for me to get down the stairs. I was again sent to medical, and this time I was told that I was not going to the hospital, to stop bothering the CEOs and sergeants, and that all this was your own fault for taking then said, take her back to her cell. All this is her own fault. I began crying and screaming, feeling like the torture and pain I was enduring didn't matter to them, that to them I was just a criminal, lower than a dog. The sergeant says to me, it's obvious that you can't be in that much pain if you're screaming. I couldn't scream like that if my head hurt, I continued to scream and cry. A different sergeant came in to talk to me. I said to her, please, I'm dying, please take me to the hospital. My human rights were violated, I wanted them to pay. Well come to find out, NYS gives you 90 days to file a lawsuit against the county, something I was unaware of. I couldn't even sue. I am still plagued with horrible claustrophobia, PTSD, and nightmares. I am traumatized and don't know if I will ever fully recover. Just 
feel like Mercury retrograde has been fucking me in the ass. And not the type of way I wanna be fucked in the ass. Like not a fun way, a really shitty way. Like to make everything 20 times worse, I am on my period and I just get so emotional and a little bit crazy when I'm on my period. And I'm not proud of the story I'm about to tell you, but I'm gonna tell it regardless. Half of my friends don't even know that I did this shit. So it's like, hi guys, telling you on here too, like what's up? All you bitches are finding out at the same exact time. I texted my dumb fucking loser ex. And you're like, Livy, that's like literally not that big of a deal. I haven't spoken to this fucker in like over a year. Honestly, like that's not really the embarrassing part. It's how I texted him and what I said. I was sitting and I was reminiscing on old times with that little dumb fuck. And like, I got in my feels about it, which is actually really rare for me especially with this fucker like i normally don't get in my feels about him but a part of me was just like i wonder if he like still thinks about me because i cut him off cold like i blocked that fucker it was like a harsh cold cut off like my little brain was like i wonder if he still thinks about you i wonder if he still thinks about you so do you know what i did i texted this man off a fake number and i said do you still think about me listen there's many reasons i didn't want to text him off my real number number one I wasn't planning on telling him it was me. Number two, I have the fattest fucking ego in the world. I hold myself to such a high standard of like not texting my exes and not being a dumb fucking bitch. But in my head, I was like, oh, I'm not a dumb bitch if it's off a fake number. Like it's barely me. The math ain't fucking mathing, Livy. Like that makes absolutely no sense. But I don't know. I just like was like, oh, it's whatever. And he responds, who is this? Like a normal fucking human being. He's like, who is this? And I'm like, guess who the fuck it is? Guess. Because I'm not gonna tell him it's me and I wanna know who he's guessing. Like if he guesses a random fucking bitch, clearly he doesn't think about me. But if he guesses me, like clearly he's thinking about me. And that's what my intrusive thoughts wanted. My intrusive thoughts wanted to know if this fucker was thinking about me. And he's like, I literally have no idea who this is. I'm like, just say a fucking name. Like just say any goddamn name. Like it's actually kind of crazy that I'm getting mad at him because he's not saying a name. I'm like, just fucking guess. Like I need to know if he thought it was me or not. He goes, Livy? Question mark. I said, I knew this fucker was thinking about me. Mind you, as I'm doing all of this, I'm sitting across from Nicole and we're at dinner. It really was just like one of those moments where I just like acted and I was like I just need to get to the bottom of this man is thinking about me or not like it was a weak bitch moment like I'm not gonna lie I look at Nicole and I'm like hey like I really need to tell you something and she's like what I was like I right now I'm texting my loser fucking ex off a fake number and like I just like really needed to let you know I'll post her reaction to my Instagram story because her face was like I literally caught her reaction she was like Nicole's like bitch what the fuck is wrong with like what what is happening and I'm like I don't know I don't know and this dumb fuck and I, we had like a quick little conversation, like nothing special. And I was like, ew, like I'm done. Like, I don't want to talk to him anymore. And listen, I get it's fucking clinically insane for me to text this fucker off a fake number. I don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's what I was telling Nicole to. I was like, I don't give a fuck. If I want to do this, if I'm having an unhinged moment and I want to text my loser ex off a fake number and wonder if he still thinks about me, then I'm going to satisfy that craving. Nicole's like, Okay, you guys, my biggest issue was just like, I felt such immense amount of guilt for doing it. Like, I hold myself to such high fucking standards, like insane standards. Where like, honestly, what I come on here and say to you guys is literally how I live my life. Like, fuck these losers. Like, I don't text my ex. I don't check up on them, anything like that. Like, I genuinely don't do that. So the fact that I did it, like just sent me into a spiral. And I also think it was like mixed with my period too because I was like literally losing my mind. But I was like, what the absolute fuck is wrong with me? And I didn't care about the fact that it was a fake number. I just cared about the fact that I even spoke to that fucker in general. I was like, what is wrong with me? And Nicole's like, well, you're a human being. That's normal. And I was like, no, but I have high fucking standards for myself i don't want to be that bitch i don't want to be the bitch that has to like give in to her like temptations or just like whatever like dumb shit like that and i know you're like okay you're being like absolutely insane about this good i am fucking insane we know i'm insane i'm crazy I expect so much fucking more of myself than like to text my loser ex like i i just i just do that's just kind of how the standards i hold for myself literally nothing came from the fucking conversation it's like yeah he still thinks about me who does it which one of my exes doesn't like this did launch me into a spiral like i really was like crying the next couple of they just like like yesterday like i was just really crying a lot i was like come on Libby, like do fucking better like i just expect more from myself like whatever and i did a really deep hard look at my love life and i realized i'm fucking with losers like just even like talking to them that just like honestly don't bring any benefit to my energy life like i'm literally i was like ugh. 
It was basically kind of just like, okay, babe, like, where'd your standards go? Like, Livy, where are they? Like, clearly they're missing. Because, like, what are these weird freaks doing about and around? In your DMs and on Hinge and shit like that. So I deleted Hinge because I was like, okay, the treacherous... First of all, the treacherous men on Hinge are, like, a whole different conversation. It's like, that's my most compatible. That motherfucker's my most compatible. Like, I didn't need to be insulted like that. So... I deleted Hinge. Also, it's just like the, the nerve of those fuckers on there. Just like cut off any of like the hoes that I really feel like don't do shit like in general. <laughs> I'm like, I know I wouldn't date this person. So why the fuck am I letting them in my energy field? I've talked before about a hoe detox and like things like that. So you can go look on my uh, previous, maybe I'll do a whole fucking podcast episode about it at this point. But like I'm now in the midst of like a very intense hoe detox. Hoes are meant for like certain parts of your life and stuff like that. And sometimes they're a good thing. But right now in my part of life, I don't want these fuckers in my energy field. And like, I am just so over it like at the end of the day it is draining energy and it's just like i should be putting my energy elsewhere like why am i putting my energy i've never done this with my mascara so like i have no idea what i'm doing why am i putting my energy with these dumb fucks that i know i'm not gonna date and i know that i deserve fucking better than these people i feel like what i learned from this low-key menti b weird moment that i had just like honor the standards i have set my for myself because they're there for a fucking reason like I have high ass standards for a reason. And like, wait until after your period to text your ex. Like, if I still had that thought after my period, which I don't think I fucking would, I probably would have never texted the dumb fuck. But whatever. It happened. I'm over it. Am I the asshole for turning around and going home on my way to the airport for a girl's trip? I, 23 female, was supposed to go on a girl's weekend trip to Spain with my longtime friend of almost 10 years, 24 female, and her other female friend, 28 female, who I was excited to meet. We all live in Germany, but her and her friend live about three and a half hours away from me, and I live closer to Frankfurt. They decided they wanted to drive through the night about 10 hours and arrive in the morning and said that if I could meet them in their town, I could drive with them. I instead elected to just fly over and meet them there since I live so close to the airport. The day before the trip, she texted me a link to book some tickets to a museum that her and her friend booked. She told me to book for 2 p.m., which is when they booked for. When I clicked the link, the only time slot available was 8.35 a.m. I pretty much was like, whatever, I will do something else while they are doing that. The night before the trip, I texted her asking how much I owed her for accommodations and whatever else we were splitting. This is the second time I've asked her since her friend was the one doing the bookings and I just assumed I would send them my share when they told me how much it cost. She didn't answer but I just assumed she was sleeping to prepare for the long drive. The morning of my flight, three hours before my flight leaves, she tells me that I had to book my own hotel room <gasps> because they're having a guy friend come with them that they invited last minute. She sent me a link so I could book at the same hotel as them for that night, but all the rooms were fully booked. Ugh. I searched around the area too, and all rooms were booked or very expensive. I really wanted to go, so I just kind of let it go and prepared myself to spend some extra money for a hotel room for myself in a different hotel. But on the way to the airport, I had a gut feeling that I wasn't going to enjoy myself, so I turned around and went home and sent her a text saying I was going to sit this one out because I was expecting a girl's trip. She's being short with me now and thinks I'm being unreasonable. Am I the asshole? Story time about when I messed up by accidentally giving a date DMT. I brought a Tinder date home last night. It was the first time that we met. Everything was pretty normal and we went back to my place and had a good time. We both had to work and weren't really expecting to share the night. Bottom line being that she wasn't prepared to stay over. She asked me if I had any treats so that she could smoke before she heads out. I, from the bathroom around the corner, say, yeah, there's a pen in the drawer beside the bed. There are two pens in that drawer. I rarely ever use a DMT pen, so I momentarily forgot. Both look like that pens, except one is a fucking 5-MEO DMT pen, and when the light bulb went off, I shouted, wait, make sure it's the black pen. I'm shouting this while turning the corner. By the time that I get in the room, she had the pen blinking, maxed out, and let out a very loose, what the? For context, I take half of that to break through. She started pushing herself up against the wall like a scared little baby deer. I was like, oh fuck, this is not good. But it's kind of quick, so I'm thinking, okay, 10 minutes and some big feelings, she'll be fine. For the next couple minutes, she lies limp on the bed like a ragdoll with intense, wide open eyes. For the next couple minutes, she, while naked, starts screaming, I am the portal! The following couple minutes, she was coming down and seemed confused, and then she broke into a huge crying fit. I'm thinking that the trip's over. Now comfort, explain, damage control. I tell her that she's okay now. Everything's okay. You used a DMT pen, not my dad pen. She cut me off with, I am God. This spooked the fuck out of me, I'm not gonna lie. 
I didn't know what to do, so I just started shouting, Stop! Please wait! While she ran outside, still naked. I have lots of neighbors, nosy ones, and I'm chasing a naked woman asking her to stop. Not a good look. Eventually, she gets winded and lays on the grass, stares up and chants nonsense. I'm on the phone with paramedics at this point, and no surprise the cops are pulling up. I was extremely worried and told the exact truth. I live in Canada where these substances don't mean big legal trouble. The girl had a psychotic episode that was DMT-induced, obviously. Apparently, she came to her senses hours later, but is still suffering from mental confusion. My neighbors probably think that I'm a rapist now. Am I wrong for suing my parents for college money? My grand-aunt set up savings account for all of her female relatives. In our culture, education for women is not really valued, and she thought that was bullshit. She lived with her father in London, where she was educated. She went to attend university and became a doctor. She married a British man. They moved to America and had a great life. She funded the education of as many of her nieces and grandnieces as she could. When she passed away, she left money for every girl relative she could. My parents managed to access the accounts that were set up for my sister and I. They used it to pay for my brother's wedding. My sister didn't care because she got married two years out of high school and had no intention of going to college. When I graduated, I went to the bank to get money for school and it was almost all gone. There was like 13000 left. I asked my parents about it and they said they had needed the money. I finally found out where the money went. I got furious. I got student loans and moved out. I'm a great source of shame to them and I don't give two f I'm currently suing them for the money that was left for me. My entire family is against me. They all think I am a complete asshole for airing private family business in public and that I am putting money ahead of family. My friends are all on my side, but they're all Americans and don't really get my culture. Neither do I, to be honest. My brother called me up and offered to pay for my university if I dropped the lawsuit. I agreed as long as we had a legal binding contract. He said I was being an asshole for not trusting him. I said he should not have accepted my money for his wedding. It is causing all kinds of embarrassment in our community. I'm somewhat ashamed to be doing this, but I don't want to have this debt I should not have. Give my dad his money back in front of his other kids and told him he was no longer welcome at my graduation. My graduation ceremony is being held next week. My dad had given me some money in advance to pay for the party. I live mostly with my mom but they were supposed to be hosting the event together. My dad and I have a very rocky relationship, but that wasn't always the case. After my parents divorced when I was 5 they split custody of me, and he was able to stay a good dad. But when I turned 10, my dad met Jane. Jane had three kids, twins and a single kid. They got married when I was 12, but I would say even before that I felt like he prioritized her kids over me. He started canceling plans with me if his other kids wanted to do something. He would either do things with them or force me to go and say it was even better than our plans, when in reality it wasn't. Like going for a hike with me versus taking them to an indoor play area. Or seeing a movie with me versus the kiddie park. One more example is when I was given a ticket for a concert to see a band that my dad and I both love. He was supposed to buy a ticket to come with me for some quality father and son bonding time. But instead, he bailed out on me and spent money on his youngest stepkid who wanted their room painted instead. He told me at the same day and it hurt so much because I missed spending time with my dad. There are other times stuff like this happened. He didn't show up at the hospital to see me when I broke my arm because his stepkid was getting their tonsils out and wanted both him and his wife there. He told my mom over the phone to tell me he was proud of me for being so brave and understanding, even though I never said that BS. When I would bring this stuff up he told me that it was natural to feel jealous of sharing his attention. That was all he would say. In 2019 he told my mom he would split the cost of a trip I wanted to go on with my friends because she didn't have the money all by herself. Mom had her half saved. We told my dad he needed to pay. He said bills were tight and it was the twins birthdays and the money needed to go towards them. He told me we could do something as a family when the trip happened instead. I told him to forget it, and obviously he was making it clear who was more important in his life. I said that I was going to stay with my mom where I actually mattered. Mom borrowed money to cover the other half of the trip. My dad told me he regretted making me feel less important and we were working on things and then the graduation money was given about a month ago. Then a week ago he called and told me how one of the stepkids was being bullied, how bad of a time they're having it, and with that money they could help cheer them up for their birthday. I was fuming. I hung up the phone. Two days later I showed up at his doorstep, gave him the money and told him I didn't want to see him or his new family at my graduation, and that he had chosen who was more important so he better stay out of my life, and I don't want to see his face ever again. His stepkids and two younger bio kids were there. I didn't stick around. He called and told me we needed to talk it out like adults, and that I had hurt the kids' feelings. His wife freaked out on me so I blocked her. Am I the jerk? 